Welcome to Jones and for Sports, where we make sports better. What is good, y'all, and welcome to another episode of the E and J Full Court Shot. As always, you join with my host E. What's good, boy? Good, bro. Nothing, nothing, man. And finally, for my joy at least, somewhat, I'm 50-50 on it, but The Last Dance, he's just seen the last two episodes of The Last Dance. Um, it's been great um, for both fans, whether you're a LeBron or a Jordan fan. Um, I'm, I'm on both sides of it, so I, it kind I of think, stuff. I think, to, wait, so even to stop me there, I think it's just good if you're just a basketball fan. Yeah, just as a basketball fan, and especially what we'll be going through now in the world and not being to have sports. And, and right now, we'd be in the playoffs. We'd be starting Conference the first finals. Round. Conference finals. Conference finals right now would be, and we're, we're missing all of that. So to have this is great for all of us. Um, but for all of you guys that know me and how I've been um, following this last dance, I've been going hard trying to defend my people. So this episode, we're going to switch it up a little bit. It's not only going to be an E&J Full Court Shot Podcast um, episode, but it's also going to be the one and only Jones and for Smoke. Because I got smoke for you motherfuckers today. <laughs> I got smoke. So we're going to do it. We're going to recap the whole shit, and then I'm going to talk about my beast a little bit. If you got any beast with the episode, we can do it. But to start off, E, being a big fan of you, being a big fan of basketball that you are, I know you said it plenty of times on this show. You're not a big Bron fan. You're not a big MJ fan. You straight Kobe. But being in the middle of that, how did you feel about this uh, this last dance? Oh, to be honest, is I liked it a lot. Like we all said going in, is the Jordan Doc, the Jordan Doc. When majority of it was the Jordan Doc, it was for the Bulls' last run and shit like that. My one critique I had against is I didn't like how it jumped around too much in episode. Like, we started in 98, yeah. then we go back to what yeah, happened in yeah. 85. But, um, no, nah, I definitely thought it was good. Just the, the inside of, like, I believe one of, if not the greatest dynasties in fucking NBA history. Absolutely. Like, before I say anything, if, if – let, let's, let's, let's hear out. If we don't – if Jordan doesn't miss the one and a half years he did – and they keep that team. That team had a chance to win the whole di- that whole ten years, bro. Yeah, very true. That's ridiculous. Like everybody says, oh, Jordan could have seven. There's a chance he could have eight to nine or ten. Yeah. Are you shitting me? It's impressive. Like, fun. So I guess the main topic of this whole thing is Jordan. Right. Obviously, I'm a Kobe fan, and I, me and you spoke yesterday. I said. The thing with this doc is it brought out the Jordan fans and the LeBron fans, and the comparisons are just boom, boom, boom. Yep. The LeBron fans having to defend everything with Jordan fans saying LeBron can't do this, LeBron can't do that. And you kind of like, it kind of hurts you because then in the way you kind of contradict yourself because shit you said defending Braun, you used against Jordan, and it's like, it hurts somebody like you who's a fan of both. So you're like yeah. being pulled in both directions. Man. <laughs> got, got no me. arms now. They pulled me. me from as, a, as, as a Kobe fan, I sat back was like, there's no argument for me to be had. I'm just going to sit here let and me, chill. Let me ask you this. You being a Kobe fan and you seeing that this stirred up the, the MJ and, and Braun uh, conversation as the GOAT. I know I heard it a few times from a few people. I got to ask you, you being a Kobe fan. Did you feel any type of disrespect towards Kobe that throughout this whole thing he hasn't gotten his name put in the conversation? I did, especially when you got guys like Stephen A. say, oh, you know, to me the reason why I don't put Kobe up is because he's basically like a mirror image of Jordan. So if Jordan's your GOAT and you have a guy who's like pretty much the same, why wouldn't he be up there? He's a fucking carbon copy of him. Don't get me wrong. Was Kobe the player LeBron? No. Right. LeBron's not even – Jordan wasn't even the player LeBron. LeBron's an all-around type of player. Right. Kobe and Jordan are scorers, killers, attack. Like, you know, yep. 
I mean, this whole, if, if anything, this doc told me about Kobe is him and Mike were the same person. Right. <laughs> you, so you, you literally got it. You re literally found. Like, to, to the point where you, you heard it. Mike talking about them playing against Kobe in his first All-Star game, he goes, that little Laker boy is going to try to take everybody one-on-one. -on -one. What did you think Mike about said, that episode? I love that one. Yeah, it was a great one. Show right? Kobe at that young age was, like, not afraid. And then you heard Mike, he goes, nah, he's going to want to play one-on-one. I'm going to make his ass work on defense, and now he can't play one-on-one. -on -one. Yep. I showed you Mike knew what was coming his way. And then if you Fast. see one of their last, like, like that, I, I can think it was that, that, that game Mike told him, I'm going to see you down the road. Mike knew mm -hmm. what was coming in Kobe. Fact. I, think, I think it was after that that they said that Kobe started calling Mike and asking mm -hmm. tips and everything like that. Absolutely. I mean, just from – that episode specifically, when you they start the episode off with the guys in the locker room talking oh, about Kobe. Now, wait, now this was what, 98? So he, Kobe was a, probably 19 years old. He was only in about his second or third year in the league. He mm -hmm. made that all-star team as a starter when he wasn't even starting for the Lakers that year. Yep. Yep. Exactly. So that just tells you. But, how dangerous and how everyone knew that just from the little glimpse of what they saw from Kobe, from the little minutes that he got with the Lakers before he became who he became, that they were already talking about him. Yo, this guy, he's going to play one-on-one. It was always there. It was always there. You, everyone knows the quote, real recognize real. And uh, Jordan recognized, yo, that motherfucker is me. That's me right there. You know, and you know what's crazy when you hear, like, the LeBron shit? What I think is, like, the crazy shit is it's not like it's coming from Mike. Right. Mike's not down in Jordan. It's the Mike supporters who are downing LeBron. And the yeah. same way LeBron, we all know LeBron has always respected Mike. That was his guy. He went right. three for even, God's fucking sake. Even throughout this, he still respects him. You know what I'm saying? It's just we need, like, that's what I'm saying. Like, we need to stop the comparison shit. The 90s, we had Jordan. The 2000s, we had Kobe. The 10s, we had LeBron. The 20s, right. we're going to have fucking Giannis. Exactly. My exactly. thing of this whole thing, the thing I love the most of this whole doc is just the fucking killer Mike was. The shit talking. Telling mm -hmm. uh, Danny Ainge on the golf course, tell your boy I got I got something for him. I him for him. And then he I dropped 50. It's part of me thinks... Thinks MJ possibly even lost on purpose just so he can get that I energy. Think, yeah, like for, for something like the, the crazy, like this, there is some sociopathic fucking trait because he thrived on shit. You see, I think he got to be a little crazy. George Carl didn't say hi to him in a restaurant. Coach the Sonics when they played them in the finals, he didn't say hi to Mike in the restaurant. Mike said okay. Took that personal and went out and whooped their ass in the final. Look at yep. that, yesterday. My favorite part of yesterday was when Mike was talking about Byron Russell, how when Mike was playing baseball, the Jazz came to Chicago. He went to go say what up to Stockton and Malone. And Byron Russell told him, why you quit? Because I can guard you. I'll lock you up. Yeah, yeah. Mike said, ever since day, that day, he was on my list. I watched his game. I knew how he played, and I knew he couldn't guard me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I know gave him two shoulder fakes and a head fake go one way. He, can't yeah. he on no. his toes. Yeah. That's he, crazy. If, if anything, this this documentary shows you that having a little sensitivity can, can fuel your fire like a motherfucker because we can clearly see Michael was sensitive. He was the sensitive motherfucker. If little things like that got him to, to, me, to go crazy like that. Like, like I told you before we got on here, that's what separates him and LeBron and Michael. Like number one, mm -hmm. that killer instinct. Like LeBron, we all know LeBron is fucking sensitive. We all mm -hmm. know there's no, there's no, no, no need to bring it up like that now. But this time, LeBron just doesn't use that. Yeah. Like I'm a Laker fan, so I want LeBron to fucking succeed. Right. And this time that I even get upset, like yo, LeBron. Go at somebody. Let's go. Like you see it now. Like he's tentative. He wants to. And and I told you. I think what had a lot to do with that is the upbringing. LeBron was the next best thing in high school. Yeah. Mike fought his way to be the goat. 
Right. Not taking away from LeBron. LeBron's phenomenal for what he can do with the fucking as big as he is, the way he can run, jump. Stevens at this age has many games and minutes he's played through these years. Yeah. So Mike, Mike wasn't drafted number one overall. He, we all know got cut from the high school team. He, when he went to North Carolina, he wasn't the best player. James Worthy said it best. I was better than him for about two weeks. Yeah. Yeah. Rookie year in Chicago, he says, I got to look for the best player on this team and take him out. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's basically just like coming from the, from the mud. Like, he knew he had to fight for everything that he wanted. And that goes to show you, you know, just because things don't work out in the beginning don't mean they, they ain't going to work out in the end. Yeah, and um, like LeBron, he I made think, them work in the end. LeBron, I think the biggest target – like that was put on him was through media. Since of like, since high school, Braun's been in the goat. He's the next this, the next that, and you know places like ESPN hurt him when you get the quote unquote ESPN stats when LeBron's the first player in five minutes of the game to do this. Like, yeah, because you're only building the hate for that man. Yep. Oh, I'm definitely. I, I got a whole segment for those motherfuckers for the media. Yeah, I think to me, to be honest, and like I said, don't get me wrong, LeBron did a lot of, LeBron did, like, bring a lot of hate to himself with the decision. Right. Like, let's face it, when LeBron was, especially in Miami with the flopping and the, uh, the indirect tweets at people, like, LeBron brought that on himself, of course. In the social media age, a lot of players did that shit. Mm-hmm. You got guys like Draymond Green that I don't even like. Like, I, I feel he's an overrated player, and he's one of the biggest mouths in the league. Yep. You know, but I think the media definitely put that target. And who's to say that like Jordan wouldn't be had the same if we had the same type of media back then? Right. Absolutely. It's um, just a whole different time. That greatest. Yeah, exactly. I don't care. I just as a Kobe <laughs> fan, just respect that man and put his name in the combo. That's it. Respect, definitely respect to that. Um. Oh, now. Wait, before we go, the one thing we got to talk about this doc, how do you feel about the whole piston situation? Piston? With, you know, Jordan, you know, with the whole Isaiah Thomas shit, keeping him, supposedly they kept him from the dream team. If, well, since if, we anything, get into- if anything, I feel like if this doc hurt anybody's rep, it's Isaiah Thomas. <laughs> so nobody, <laughs> nobody fucks with him. It, it really did. And another person that I think it fucked up uh, reputation was Scotty's for damn sure. But we are, I'm going to definitely talk about it. But to, to answer your question, I got to like this. We getting started now. We getting started. It's that good lie right here. That purple pineapple. Now, I don't know about that good shit. But to answer your question... The whole Isaiah shit is re- – I think that was overblown. I mean, I understand where Mike and the Bulls were coming from and be My my whole thing is yeah go ahead go ahead. Nah, your, 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 your shit cut out so I wasn't. Oh, here. Okay. Um, <laughs> my whole thing is the Celtics were doing that to the Pistons before then. When the when the Pistons finally beat the Celtics, they got the clip. The Celtics walked out the court. The only and they they everyone wants to point out that um I forgot who it was that stopped and shook Isaiah Thomas's hand. That's not what happened. He was walking off the court, too, and Isaiah went out of his way to go shake his hand. Yeah, but like, we get that because, you know, us, like us, when we play football, we've been to championship games, we lost big games, we're shaking our hands. We've won right. big games where you see that certain dudes on a team who doesn't shake your hands, and we're like, yo, that's how it's going to be. Fuck you. So you got to understand it as a competitor, like, if you can't take the loss as a man, because who? Right. If, if I'm the Bulls and the Celtics did it to me, I'll call the Celtics out on that too. Of course, I don't have no problem with them calling it out. 
My problem is what happened after is they left him off of the Olympic team. Well, from what from if the doc showed you anything, it wasn't just because that is he had a bad he had a bad rep with a lot of guys. Right, right. But most even still though, you're gonna leave a guy off because you don't like him, and he's yeah, one of the, the now, greatest point guards of all time. Understandable, but here's my counterpoint to that. The coach of that dream team was Isaiah's coach in Detroit. Why didn't he fight to get him on that? That That's shows you there's something there that people really – Magic didn't fuck with him. Jordan and Pippen didn't fuck with him. You know what I'm I, saying? Like, I understand all of that and them not respecting him because of what he did and him being physical. But let's not forget, Patrick Ewan was on that Knicks team that was physical as hell too. And he knocked Jordan to his ass and picked him to his ass and I, knocked him to his ass a few times too. But I think it was so much more of not so much on the court but off the court. I understand that, but at the end of the day, the goal was to win the medal, which is obviously what they ended up they doing. They ended up doing anyway. Right. They did that, which was – it was given. But to not have a man on a team – when you're going to put no no shade to John Stockton, but you're going to put John Stockton over, over Isaiah Thomas, when MJ and Magic Johnson have both said he is the second best shooting guard of all time and one of the best defenders as well on defense, I mean, that was just straight disrespectful. I, I, me as a man, I would have just, hey, all right, you know what? We got our differences, but let's we on the same team now. Let's 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 you know work for the same goal and get it done, and then after that we don't got to talk no more. It's a dub after that. It's you know what I mean. But I feel like they really tarnished his 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 reputation and his 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 um his uh yeah his rep basically. And the thing that pisses me off about that is because everyone's complaining about certain things that he did to the other players. Why isn't anybody? bashing MJ for what he did to his own teammates. Everyone wants to give him a pass because they won. I understand, yes, it worked. I, I, I don't have no problem with the fact that it motivated some of them. But in today's game, what? That's not happening. Me, yeah, personally, but, back in those days, I wasn't taking that shit. Of course not, but... You're not going to call me no bitch and a hoe and all that shit. You know what the problem is? Right there, you said it. And then... You had his teammates coming out and say, yeah, we did this. But it's kind of like they said, yeah, they took it. You know, like they took it. Like if they're not complaining about it, who are we to fucking complain about it? Right. Well, there was a story the other day that Kobe came out and told Jeremy Lin, you know, that year Jeremy Lin was on the team around the trade deadline. You're going to see which one of y'all bum asses get traded tomorrow. Traded. Yeah, yeah. So right. I exactly. So you like, I guess. You're playing with that type of competitor. They're just like, I know you're saying this as like, you know, LeBron. We all know LeBron's probably one of the best teammates. But let's not forget to mention you. We all know the LeBron's history with being a teammate. Sometimes you ain't playing well. He's one of the ones to ship your ass out too. Right. Well, I, see, everyone says that. Now, you, we can't lie. LeBron has a lot of front. He has players. said. He has Absolutely. a lot of front office, you know, like he can, he has a lot of say when but every, he can I understand I'm that. Not, I'm not saying that when you're the I feel like every team's best player should have not have a say, but at least, you know, if I'm a GM, let's talk about it. Hey, we're interested in this guy. Do you think he fits well in our system? To go right off of your else. point. Right off of your point, like you just said. Everyone always throws out LeBron's name when it comes to trades and shit like that. I don't think there I, there might be a few especially if they're bad teams, but the good teams, you don't think their GMs are, are talking to their best player on the team and saying, look, we want to make these moves. What do you think? I just think the, the reason why that's hurt LeBron is because we've seen ownership do so much just to benefit him, bringing the head, firing the head coach. To, though. Oh, wait, no, no, firing, to. firing a head coach in season just to bring your Who guy. did they fire? Who did they fire? E. Black, David Black. David Black. But wait, but wait. When they fired him, they did have the best record in the East. Okay, but in, um, LeBron, for the most part, if you remember correctly, 
He but, was coaching that team. But that's the thing. Well, I'm not saying no, no. I'm not saying there's anything wrong. But I'm saying the reason why I feel like the, tar- the target was there is because we've seen ownership basically put him out there. To be honest, that's ownership putting LeBron out there. Like if it goes wrong, it's LeBron's fault. Exactly. Exactly. That's the problem. That's right. what I'm saying. I'm not shitting on him and saying, listen, every, I think every star player, I'm not saying you're the good. If you're a superstar, because there's teams that have star players, but if you're a fucking Giannis, Steph mm-hmm. Curry, this, that, that, you should not have a say, but at least let the GM come talk to them. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I think that's everybody. It's just because it's LeBron and he's the biggest name in, in NBA right now. Um, he gets a lot of the blame for it and shit. But my, my other thing to that, and this is not at you, this is to all the other people that talk, um, is, damn, I kind of forgot my point. Um, it was about the the uh, the trading and shit. I, f- I forgot, but whatever. Um, moving on to the next thing I wanted to talk about. We just watched se- uh, the last two episodes, so let's Let's focus in on that real quick um, before we move on. What did you think about the last two episodes? What did you learn new? What did you, um, what were your thoughts? I liked the, the last two episodes. It was definitely, you know, cool. It showed, I mean, we heard, we've seen a lot about Steve Kerr. You know, the whole shit with his pops, you know. I'm definitely glad that. he got his moment. Yeah, you know, it was, it was, it was definitely dope. You know him not being great in the playoffs or something, and he had that year he just knocking out big shots, and mm-hmm. you know the whole fucking Dennis Rodman leaving to go be a fucking wrestler right after a game, and the next game back he played like he didn't miss a beat. Yep. Yep. That shit is crazy, and then of yeah. course Jordan that last game playing all for forty eight minutes. Scotty with the back. Scotty even said he goes, I was a decoy that whole game, and they didn't even fucking know nothing. Mm-hmm. And that, I'm glad you brought that up because I think that's another point because a lot of MJ fans don't want to give MJ's uh, teammates their credit. And that pisses me off because whenever we have these conversations about MJ and LeBron, they always want to point out the teammates that LeBron, uh, LeBron had, D-Wade, Kyrie, Bosh, Love, they want to point those guys out, but they never want to mention Scotty, uh, Steve Kerr, Phil Jackson, which is one of, if not the greatest coach of all time. They don't want to give those guys credit. So I'm glad that one, that they, this documentary gave yeah. them the light. And two, um, I think MJ fans need to start realizing yeah, the, they the had only, a great team. The only, the only thing I think, like, in that sense is the one thing you got to say is with the, the comparison of teammates, LeBron played with more All Stars. He did. Jordan played, Jordan played with more role players. Right, I understand so, that. So, to, in that, that sense, but in that sense, those teams were built better around Jordan. Exactly, exactly. That team was more built in on the system. Everyone bought into that system. Of Even course. MJ, MJ didn't want to buy into that system when it first got uh, introduced to him. Yeah. Bill Jackson had to let him know, look, I understand we're going to take the ball out of your hand and you're probably not going to win uh, scoring titles all the time. But you're going to start putting that gold on your finger. You want that gold? You got to buy into the system to where your teammates also uh, can help you, you know, make this happen. And it, he bought in and that it worked. And that I have mad respect for, for Jordan for that because being the guy that he is, and like I said, him winning scoring title after scoring title, being the face of the, the, the league, who wants to give that up? But at the same time, he knew what, what the bigger picture was. All right, I got the, the, the MVPs. I got the, yeah, but the scoring titles, the dunk contest. I need gold. That's pretty much every player now. You see all the guys when they first come to the league. I don't know every, about that. Wait, 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 wait. All the young guys when they first come to the league, they're making them names. Once they hit a certain year, that's when it's like, you know what? Now I want to focus on winning the chip. You're right, but there's also a lot of them that don't. A la Melo. Well, Melo's. <laughs> Shout out Melo. Sorry to say that, Melo, but 
It's true. You you definitely had some opportunities to where you could have went Mello, to Mello, You could have went to Miami. Mello, Mello, you didn't. You went for the bag. Mello, I think Melo was more focused on financial future. He was on that bag. He wanted to give Melo his shit. My man trying to be a billionaire, and, 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 and I gotta give him. You know, I gotta give him his credit for that. Yeah. The other thing I wanted to say, talk about, which I kind of forgot about, which is weird because I was actually, I can actually, I was old enough to remember the the Jordan and uh, Reggie Miller series. I remember watching that with my pops, like that whole series. And I don't remember it going seven. I thought it went uh, uh, six. So when I saw that it went seven yesterday, I was like, oh, shit, that went seven? That well, finally, there was a team that brought this team. Yeah, like that, that could have been like Jordan's one of his only few game sevens. Exactly. That's I another. Think that's the, before we even get to that, like back to the thing, like the LeBron, you gotta give Jordan the credit with that sense in the playoffs. Is it was never game sevens. Right. They always, they were almost always in control of the series. Exactly. That's, you know, obviously, LeBron. LeBron has some of his greatest moments in Game Seven. Of course, nobody will forget that fucking block and nothing like that. But I'm just saying, is that but, shows you know when when you're not even going in Game Seven, like we got to give Jordan his back. I, I I respect that point, but at the same time, my back point to it would be Jordan had he always had a good team with him. Jo uh, LeBron but, in some situations didn't have a great team. And he it forced him to go to Game Seven because his team wasn't showing up every day. He was yeah, showing up. He did let he did have Game Sevens with Miami. Right? No, absolutely, absolutely. Uh, no, no, don't get me wrong. Like I said, you know, I feel like it, it's in a way it is hard to tell because, like, especially what's going to be held against LeBron the most is his Miami years because right. he didn't do it alone. But in that mm -hmm. sense. That was the, the, the period of super teams. So exactly. When Jordan was playing, can we – no, I'm not going to deny Jordan went against countless fucking Hall of Famers. Exactly. People and, forget about that. You know, but LeBron did go against superstar teams. Superstar teams. Like, like teams beyond. Full of guys. Yeah, you know, team full of guys. So I, I'm not going to deny that. But – Like, I'll, still, I'll give Jordan the road – to the finals, no question was tougher. His road to the finals That's was That's the only problem I have because you see LeBron fans are like, oh, how many years did he go straight? But let's not forget, LeBron ran the East when the East was weak. Right. But everyone says the East was weak. It wasn't always weak. His last couple years, like in Cleveland, that East was weak. His Miami years, right. he, had, he had a little threats, you know, with Indiana, Chicago. But, but think about this for a second. You, you're absolutely right. Those last few years, the East was weak. But LeBron was also by himself that last year. That last year before when Kyrie left, oh, he cool. brought that team by himself. Yeah. And there were other teams. You had Philly. You had Boston. You had um, Toronto. They had at least two All-Stars or at least one All-Star or star on that team, on those teams. LeBron did, just had him. The only thing I can refute, I'm not even trying to refute it that much with the Philly Boston thing is they weren't there yet. They were just, you, you had not, like Jason Tatum was a rookie, stuff like that. I understand That's that. The only thing I say, but you know, and like you said, in the sense of Jordan, Detroit, Austin, Knicks, Indiana, and then the finals itself Malone and Stockton, Sonics, Lakers with Magic. So of course that's hard, you know. Like LeBron, I won't front getting when when you go to the finals and then you gotta play the Spurs. Like the exactly. one knock, I think the one knock LeBron will have as a finals loss was against Dallas. That's the only one I can't excuse because it's your big three against Dirk, and he was the one that froze. And that's the it was him. I have no excuse for him. LeBron. That's what I think hurts LeBron because there's times. You know, he didn't show up in the big game, like in the finals. 
You know, obviously his his last couple finals trips with Cleveland, he had to show up. Like you said, he was there. But that 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 one loss in the finals is one that'll be the, the black mark of finals losses. Like there's no question. No, you should have lost to that Dallas team. No question. Like, we no would we you would excuse the loss to OKC more if they would have lost to OKC, even though they weren't ready. You could excuse that more than that Dallas loss because a big three against yeah. the guy. Right. Absolutely. No question. You know, obviously, the Spurs teams, them Spurs teams. Whenever anyone brings up 2011, I always say I have no argument for 2011. Yeah, you can't. You can't. I, I, there's no LeBron fan, and I haven't seen any LeBron fan ever try to back him up on 2011 because you can't. You that just can't. Too unexcusable. But every other finals, LeBron showed up. Even in losses, he has showed up. At 2014, every, they always bring up 2014. LeBron showed up. Wade was injured. Bosch wasn't playing like Bosch that we've seen, and our bench wasn't shit. And the last thing, people keep forgetting, that Spurs team was elite. Everyone forgets. But on the only thing you got to say, the, the one thing we say about that is, you're if you're 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 a Ray Allen miss away from losing, you know, from not even getting there. So, you know, right. But not like you said. First of all, but any people team, forget any you, team who lost to those. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Before you go on, you bring up the Ray Allen thing, and 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 everyone says Ray Allen saved his ass, but everyone forgets LeBron. If it wasn't for LeBron, they wouldn't have been in that situation. LeBron I, brought them back. I could tell you this too. If they weren't, if LeBron's ass would have made his fucking free throw. Right. But still, that's still later. And that's, that's just frustration as a Laker fan. Because LeBron doesn't hit free throws now, so it irritates Right. Me. That's his, definitely his. No, no, before anything, any team who lost to that Spurs, those Spurs teams, I will never talk shit about. That Spurs team is fucking great. They were amazing. They that's shot a, great, they still great. have the NBA finals record for the Best shooting percentage. You have you have the probably the best one of the best coaches ever. Yep. The best big man ever to play. Yep. Kawhi. You got Kawhi. You got Tony Parker. You got Manu I mean, Danny Green was shooting. Danny Green shooting a fight. Uh, was that the finals that he shot the? the he broke the record. Did. It might have been that that finals. Patty Mills playing out of his fucking mind. Like, yep. I'm never gonna Boris bash Dio. any team who lost to the Spurs. Or is Dial? Like I will never bash a team who lost to the Spurs. Absolutely, that Spurs, any Spurs teams is a class. They have five rings for a reason. You feel me? It's not a mistake. You know what I mean? So, but other than that, LeBron has showed up, and I, like I said, I'll never excuse 2011. That was his fault. That's that. That's all on him. But other than that, LeBron has been there. He's done what he's supposed to do, um, and it's it's a shame that people still bash it. If you if you are an MJ fan and you think MJ's the goat, I have no problem with that. I really don't because I can understand. After watching this, I can definitely understand why everyone would think he's the goat. There's no question. But to me, I just have different reasons to why I think and um, LeBron is better. That's that's it. I just have other reasons to why because he's. I think it's, for my reason, it's overall. His overall body of work is better than MJ's besides the rings. The rings, you can't touch those. He's got six, and he's got no losses. You can't touch that. But LeBron, overall body of work, just to me, is, is, um, is better. And unfortunately, he lost. Six times in the finals. That fucking kills you. That definitely kills you. But you, I also think you also have to pull back the curtain and look at the teams that he went against. You know? In, I think in certain finals, MJ would have lost himself. He wouldn't have lost in 2011. I, like I said, MJ would have won that series. No question. 2014? I don't know. I really don't know because, yes, MJ would have went off. And for everyone else out there, LeBron also went off. He did. He had he averaged twenty eight, eight and eight that series. And that people always want to say Kawhi should shut him down. He did. But Kawhi wouldn't have MVP. Himself. 
Kawhi huh? Won, Kawhi won that MVP not yeah. defensively but offensively because let's not let's not like Kawhi put in work on LeBron. LeBron couldn't yeah. guard Kawhi, and yeah. that's like same way Andre Iguodala won that MVP. You make LeBron work where he's tired. Right, right, but no, it's just like you. You, my thing is, you just gotta look at. You can't just shit on on LeBron. You know what I mean? That's what my thing is. Everyone shits on him. You you gotta be able to appreciate what he's been able to do at the same time. But, and the pressure, like you said, when we were talking about you talked about the media. MJ, knowing what we know of MJ now after watching that series, I don't think MJ would be able to deal with the media today. I mean, look at because he at couldn't the, deal with it then. Yeah, he didn't like it. He goes, "This is the only quiet time I get is laying on my sofa in the fucking hotel room. This is my only exactly, time. exactly." So, and I've heard guys like Chris Broussard say it. He doesn't d- think that MJ would have been able to live in this type of environment with the type of scrutiny that everything you do is going to be criticized. Everything. LeBron has to grow up in that. And I think that's, I'm not going to make an excuse, but I'm saying I definitely think that's part of the reason what got hit in his head in 2011 in the final. Yeah. I think all that pressure definitely got to his head. But, um, yeah. But getting back to the, to the, to the episode, um, another thing that I wanted to talk about with the whole last dance thing was MJ's treatment of his teammates. Now, there's been a lot of talk about it. I have two things I want to say about it. One is I respect and understand what MJ did for his teammates by pushing them. And because as a team captain, when I was growing up in high school on the football team, I know that type of responsibility. And being friends with these guys outside of football, Football and then bringing it to football, know that you have to change. There's no time for being yeah, friends. You got to be tough yeah, on, the, on the people. You can't be the friendly guy because then when you when you need to pull your teammates all out of him, he's not gonna take it. Like that fire is not gonna be lit. Right. You know, if right. I if I'm exactly. too friendly with you and I tell you, hey Sean, you know I need you to do this. No, I need you to get off your ass, Sean. Let's go wake the fuck up. That, you know what I'm saying? Right. Right. There's been plenty of times where I've had to get in a few of my teammates' ass at halftime or whenever or in practice because they're not working hard enough. And I see all the other guys working hard enough. We're not going to have that. So, of course, you're going to get in your ass. But there's definitely a line that you do not cross, especially as grown men. We weren't grown men back then when I was doing that shit and shit like that. Now, we do it a little bit now with our football team now. But – we know there's a line that you just don't cross. And we've seen plenty of fights, even where in our situation in football, where guys talk shit like crazy. But you cross a line, you say certain words, you're going to get a whole different type of person. So I think there was plenty of times where MJ crossed the line and he went too far, especially with the guys that he was picking on. That's my problem. He's picking on little Steve Kerr. And, and Steve Burrell, come on. You wasn't trying that shit on Oakley. You wasn't trying that shit on Rodman. Come on, bro. But I think the reason why he didn't is because he was already getting what he wanted out of those guys. I understand that. But at the same time, I could still see a guy like Oakley, if he didn't do he, – he fucking up, doing something he probably didn't mean to do in the practice or whatever. Or he, he just took a play off. But MJ didn't say a word to him. But if it was Steve Kerr that took one playoff, he want to punch him in his eye. I guess because the shit with that is you gotta you know remember, I mean? like you gotta remember for a guy like a Steve Kerr, you don't really have that opportunity to take plays off. You know, like guys who were brought into situations where you're not highly touted, you're not the guy, you're this, that, you're the scrappy guy on the team. And if we need you to succeed, I need that fire lit under you every practice, every game. So you, when you come in the game in that big moment, there's no pressure. So I guess putting that pressure on you and letting you know if this is what you're getting out of your teammate, this is what if this is what you're gonna get out of your teammate. Now when we get on there, whatever they got for you, those opponents got for you, it's gonna be nothing. Respect. I, I understand that, but like I said before, there's 
what you said is correct. But one, well, the putting hands on people and all that shit, yeah, yeah, right. you don't do that. You're crossing lines, you and then the that. other thing that I want to say is there's also another way of approaching being a good teammate on how you want to teach the you the younger guys or the guys that you really want to um, motivate. If you're hard, a great example is the New England Patriots, the Patriot way. Tom Brady gets shit from Bill Belichick more than any player on that team. Before he was there. Yep. And that set the example for everyone else. Yep. That's what I think could have been Jordan. Now, I mean, he did what he did. It worked. I, it is what it is. But I'm saying there's other ways of doing it. You, he could have definitely went hard on Pippen and Oakley and all those guys. And if but they – But they, now, like – they Kerr and all those guys have no choice but to accept it and be like, you know what, if those guys are doing it, I ain't, I can't say shit, but MJ sitting like he he ran everything. I like I like, I like y'all say LeBron does. I'm glad you said Pippen's name because if you now just to counterpoint, the whole point is when Jordan was retired, the year he retired in that playoff game, Pippen quit on the team. He did. And who's to say now if Mike was there, Pippen ain't quitting on that team. Well. Uh, obviously, because the ball wasn't going to Pippen, regardless, it was going but to MJ. Still, but look at look at yesterday. You know, Pips hurt. His his back was fucked up. Mike's in his face. I need whatever you got. Ball here, and Pips on the court playing. It just goes to show. You know, when that alpha is there, that alpha male lead is there, and, and you you already have that where guys are willing to do whatever they fucking can for you. Right. And no, you're that, you, right. Take, you take that, that that out and look. I'm the guy. To be honest, Pippen should have never quit on that team because he's the guy. That was his chance to be like, yo, I'm going to win without Mike. Look at Kobe. Shaq loved Kobe. did whatever he could to win without Shaq. Right. We had honest. down years where the Lakers didn't make the playoffs and all of that. And this no, Shaq you're right about that. Me. You're right, but at the same time, you know, that team still was successful without Jordan. And that you heard guys like Steve Kerr and some of the other players say, they like they they loved Scotty as their captain and, and him running the show. Obviously, it's a different mentality. You don't have MJ, the killer in there, really pushing you. I understand there's a difference there, but I think if you ask those teammates what uh, style of leadership they would rather, I think most of them, maybe half, would have split and said we like Scotty's uh, mentality. Okay. You know, because we still would have got some W's, even with MJ in there. If MJ's there, if he used that type of style of of, of uh, leadership, I think they still would have been successful. I think he just went too far in certain places. And I know in me in that position, I wasn't going to take it. And I know he said something like, um, if you don't like my style of leadership, then you probably never won something. And that's horrible. That, how are you going to say some shit like that, MJ? And I think what, what makes it worse is the fact that he's won so much, so you're like, damn, bro. Like, right. is he right? It makes you question, is he really right? He's not, though, because no, there's – No, but I'm just saying, it puts that thought like, damn, he yeah, yeah. He's got a point because he's won everything. Like, He definitely has. He was definitely fortunate for that. But at the same time, there's guys like Shannon Sharp, who's also – won three Super Bowls and chose a whole different style, a different, a new style of leadership. You know what I mean? There's guys like Ray Lewis, who we know on the, on the field is a fucking killer. One of the greatest, if not the greatest middle linebacker of all time. But he didn't, you don't see him. And he, this nigga got a murder case, had a murder case. You said killer on. You said killer on the field. I, I didn't know if you want if you went on and off. So I was like, okay. You know what I mean? <laughs> you know what I mean? So I mean, but at the same time, I can't hate because it worked and his teammates respected it. So if they respect it, I ain't got no problem. I'm just saying I don't <laughs> want it to influence guys now. These young guys thinking now, right? it wouldn't really fly now. It wouldn't fly now at all, not in today's yeah. society and shit like that. Definitely wouldn't fly now. And to, to Jordan's credit, that was definitely a tougher era, so you had to be tough. I think that's what had a lot to do with it. Like, I got to give you right. this. I got to toughen you up because we're going to go tomorrow and play Detroit, and 
they're gonna fucking clothesline your ass if you try something stupid. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? So I guess that like like that's my whole point. The whole all Jordan's ways, I think it's all based on the time he was playing in. Right, right. Absolutely. Um what else did I wanna say? Um I got like two more things that I wanna talk about. I'll save that one for last. This one was another thing that I learned about this documentary was, which I already knew, but is that MJ was human. That he made mistakes on the court, he made mistakes off the court. Obviously not until now, well obviously if you grew up in that era, you you might have knew of some of those things, but a lot of kids today don't know about some of the things that were going on back in those times. So um, it was great to see, see it for myself, but also that MJ allowed it to be on the show, on the documentary, to, to let people yeah, know. Yeah, it's good that he didn't, like, try to fucking just make himself look like a, a good guy the whole time. Right. And then that's what I thought it was going to happen. It, it kind of looked like it, like it at times, but he definitely showed some, some low points in his career, which I appreciate him doing that for sure. Um, he, he definitely had some points, and I want people to know that everyone's human. And when it happens... You just got to bounce back. And MJ bounced back in the best way possible by winning rings. So. I mean, and that's the thing. Like, if you look at, like, today with, with a lot of athletes and they continually getting in trouble and shit like that, it's just like the greatest of all time did it. But mm-hmm. we've seen that he bounced back, like you said, and just, he, you know, it, it changed. Like, obviously, we all know the fucking competitor he is. That gambling shit will never stop. He was gambling throwing fucking quarters against a wall type shit. So you can, yeah, that's, that's just, that's just competitive fire. Like, yeah. His competitive fire was trying to win at any game we play type of shit. But I just think like, like, I, like we said, like today's day, guys are always in trouble. And it's like, I, we, we get on when a new guy gets in trouble. It's like, yo, bro, what the fuck, bro? Yeah. People just got to understand like how fortunate you are to play. Like, there's guys like us who wish we could play pro sports, but wasn't born tall enough, fast right. enough, stuff like that. So it that sucks. Absolutely. Yeah. Being on the outside looking in, I mean, being on the inside looking out, seeing these guys that are so fortunate to have the the talent to be make it to the pros and do all these great things and just to give it up like that. Yeah. Retarded. So MJ was the type of person, whenever he had any type of blowback, he was going to turn it into a positive on the court. For yeah. damn sure. Every time. And, and that was the thing with me watching that was like, and, and we spoke about it a little bit off, off air, was MJ used any little thing for motivation. Anything. Any little thing he could for motivation. And... Some of the things that when people got on him about the the uh, Harvey Dent, Grant or whatever the fuck his name was, um, election and shit like that, all those things, guys saying stuff to him uh, on the court and off the court, he used it. His, his killer mentality was ridiculous. Mamba mentality came from, from that. Oh. Mamba mentality was born from that. Of you know what I mean? And that, like you said, that's the, the difference between him and LeBron. LeBron doesn't turn it up like that. We don't see that Bron into the playoffs. LeBron doesn't really it doesn't have that killer instinct in, in the, the regular season. MJ had it 82 games in the regular season and 16 games or more Just in the to make playoffs. Like it, was, it was almost like the sense of and any day, any game we're playing, I'm just proving that I'm better than you. Right. Absolutely. He took everything personal, as we've seen in the documentary. He took everything personal. And that's what and I think, like, we've seen a little bit this year how LeBron took, like, the whole Wash King shit. Like, right, I feel like right. as a Laker fan, I would love if LeBron took Wash King and this whole hate he got off this doc, built that shit up, and if whenever the NBA comes back, he uses it and goes out and wins a chip. I would love that. You know what I'm I saying? think this is definitely gonna. I think this mo- this documentary is motivating LeBron, regardless. I hope because so. <laughs> we all know that's his favorite player. That's who we idolized. I hope MJ. So. I hope so. You know, so I think all of this is only motivating LeBron to it's back onto the court so he can dominate. And I want to say we we talked about the weak ass East and how LeBron dominated the weak ass East for years. 
I posted a, something on Instagram a couple of days ago about LeBron being in the West and now dominating the West. I don't, I don't, what's up? People, people was talking a lot of shit, but he in the West now. We ain't talking about last year. He was hurt last year. Everyone wanna say, uh, he was hurt. He was he wasn't he didn't do a full year last year. He didn't do a full year this year. We know damn well if the season were to be complete this season, coronavirus or not, the Lakers were gonna be the number one seed. So don't give me that that yeah, shit. But you know what? I'm gonna tell you this now. Like it wouldn't really do nothing right now, that talk, because the same peoples with the weak ass East, like don't get me wrong, I believe the East was weak for sure, but that song are the same people who are riding the Clippers bandwagon. Right, exactly. It, it, it would exactly. be said that it's we just... wouldn't make it past the Lakers wouldn't make it past the Clippers. Exactly. Like it's just ignorant biased fans. And that's what my thing is, is I don't if you know E, I'm not biased. I I support my people, I support my fans, but when when they fuck up or they do something, oh, I don't support. I don't. I, you gonna hear me say I don't support. That's how I feel. Like as, mm-hmm. as 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 big as a Laker fan I am, if let's say the NBA was to come back and we have a playoffs of some sort, and they literally come and shit the bed, I'm not gonna say, oh, it was because the layoff. No, everybody had the same layoff. Exactly. You know? Exactly. But don't, don't, don't I don't want to hear NBA comes back and the Lakers pick up picked up where they left off and. Dominate. Just to be right. honest, this layoff only kind of helps them because it gives you LeBron to rest a little more, AD mm-hmm. to rest a little more. Right. And if the not if when the Lakers come back and win it all, I don't want to hear no bullshit about oh they had rest. Kawhi had rest. Paul George had rest. And let's, let's keep it. Real. Everyone has Kawhi's rest. Been, Kawhi's been having a lot of rest because Kawhi don't practice every game. Exactly. LeBron has played a lot more games than Kawhi and PG this year. Kawhi and PG hasn't even – they probably haven't even practiced as much. They, exactly. They, they didn't this practice hurts, together. Though. I honestly think this this rest hurts the Clippers. The scary thing for me about this break, it rested it, – it, it helps fucking Giannis rest because before, before this break happened, Giannis was dealing with the knee injury. Right. So that that can be scary for the East because you got Giannis coming back at a hundred percent. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, but with um the Clippers and shit, I, yeah, you know, ah, I forgot my point again. <laughs> anyway, fuck the Clippers. We're not talking about the Clippers anymore. All right, moving on to the last point that I wanted to make about this series, which is fucking hilarious because I didn't know about this until watching this shit, which was. The infamous, well, no, I won't say infamous, but the famous flu game, mm-hmm. which is now known as the food poisoning AKA game, the pizza game, aka the hangover game, aka <laughs> the food poisoning game. What were your thoughts when you when you saw that? And same shit, like, like that that whether it's true or not, you know they weren't gonna give you the truth about it. You know, I, if it is true, I yeah, like, but yes, like, if it is true, you guys are kind of fucking stupid taking a pizza that took five guys to deliver, you fucking idiots. Right. Like, and not even, like, why would you even order, you know, to Jordan himself? Why not have a fucking villain, no name guy on the team bring it to Mike's room? Right. Could have went other ways around. This is what I'm trying to say. Exactly. Exactly. They, there was. You know, or how about you know, like we could have sent a, a a a fucking equipment guy out to go pick it up. Right. They could have did a lot of shit. And the there was there was numerous ways of getting around that. And the dude said, his his uh, um, trainer said, he felt weird about it from jump. So why would you still give him the pizza? I understand he might have been hungry or whatever the case may be, but I, go anywhere but Salt Lake City <laughs> to, to get him food because obviously they're not going to give him good food. Yeah. Now, my other thing with that was, like you said, who knows if that's actually true? I personally believe it, it was a hangover. Oh, of course. I think it was a hangover. We've all been through through it before. And I personally think it was a hangover. 
But regardless of what it was, he still went out there and performed and performed well. So it doesn't take away from what he did on the court. He still did that within that condition. So it doesn't hurt him in any way. Um, it's just funny to have the backstory after all these years change that it's not the flu game. It's the, the hangover game or the, you know, the uh, food poisoning game. Um, but uh, that's, 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 that's fine. But other than that, Man, personally, I love the, the documentary. I thought it was great. I thought it was great for us fans to watch. Um, the only bad thing I could I could possibly say about it is, um, you know, MJ, I felt like, oh, I didn't really talk about this much. They shitted on Scotty a lot on this thing. And some of it was his fault. Absolutely. I, I can't say that it wasn't some of those things weren't his fault. But I feel like there were a lot more shit bad than there was good about scotty you know what i mean and yeah um scotty came out recently and said he he kind of didn't like that but at the end of the day it's mj's documentary so he's gonna have final say um you know if that's how he wanted to get have it played then that's how it's gonna have it played um but it's gonna be interesting to see how some of uh, mj's relationships are gonna be after this <laughs> i mean whether he cares or not but I know Scotty definitely wasn't feeling it, and Isaiah wasn't feeling it. So um, obviously, like obviously, now this opens up to a lot more docs. You know, like mm -hmm. I heard there's a magic one coming. Uh, there's a D Wade one out, and I didn't even know about it. I gotta go fucking so, check that so, one out. What I heard is Dwayne Wade's making one. He made it's already out. It's yeah. Um, I gotta I gotta I see what it's on. There, there's a Kobe one on the way of his final year. Um, obviously, the ESPN got 30 for 30 with a Clippers one. I, that, that seems very interesting. So I just want to know, out of like that, being, you know, we all loved it, what other docs would you want to see? Like, I would like to see an OKC, the OKC3, you know, like inside how that worked out. Um, You know what would be a good one? Seeing, well, I mean, I don't know if a lot of people would want to see. Don't say the Spurs because that'll be the boringest fucking no, 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 no. Ever. I don't want to sleep. Gonna say the Spurs. I was going to say the new Chicago Bulls when D. Rose arrived and they had the all rise that. Of type shit, like the rise of Derrick Rose. Right. And you know, That's trying to rebuild what the the brand was and what the Chicago Bulls already did. And, honestly, and, like to bring it to we can eat, I wouldn't mind seeing the Knicks one. That little yeah, absolutely. Had, we got, we got a, garden, a garden. They don't even have to do the Knicks. They can just do the the garden, you know, all the teams that came. Like, I, def I, definitely, I definitely think this doc opened up a lot of doors to see a lot more sports docs. Absolutely, I mean, obviously you gotta you throw out LeBron there. Um, yeah. His his there doc. Go. LeBron going ridiculous. back to Cleveland. Yeah, yeah. That is, there's gonna be some some great great documentaries no. um, after oh. this, but hopefully, it was definitely. We, go, we get our sports back. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but it was definitely fun watching it. And um, I know, honestly, I don't know what, whether this swung people more towards MJ or more towards LeBron. For me, it didn't swing it either way. I just appreciated uh, MJ's greatness even more. You know, that's all it did for me. I, I didn't want to knock him at all because I appreciate what he did. Because if there wasn't a MJ, there wouldn't be a lot of players today. We wouldn't have Wait, Kobe. You can say it. We wouldn't have Kobe. We wouldn't have Braun. Like we wouldn't have Braun. We wouldn't like, have these guys if it wasn't for MJ. So yeah. MJ was my favorite like, player growing up. I'm not. That's what I like. That's what I like, like. that's what I like now. Like you see a lot of the young guys in the NBA now. If there's no Steph Curry, well, there's no Trey Young. Right. There's exactly. no. There's no Kobe. Which there's certain is, guys that paved the way. Like, you, there's right there. You got the Jordan branch, right? There's no Jordan. There's no Kobe. There's no Kawhi. There's mm -hmm. no Jason Tatum. There, you know, there's a lot right. of – there's no DeMar DeRozan. None of these guys. Exactly. Exactly. So, big shout-out to MJ, um, Jason Tier. I think that's how you pronounce his name, the, the producer. Did a, a great job on it. Uh, ESPN. And, yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, other than that, we'll wait and see what happens with the rest of the NBA. We'll see when we get it back, if we get it back. And um, other than that, we'll probably we'll, well see. One quick thing on that. One about. quick thing on that. Larry Nance, make up your fucking mind. How you come out and say, yeah, we, you know, I feel bad. The league should come back. Then I just seen it today. 
oh, I feel scared. I don't want to get the corner. The Byron Nance, it doesn't matter. You play for the Cavs. You weren't making the playoffs anyway. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. You staying home regardless, my guy. <laughs> but that's another episode of E and J Full Court Shot slash Jones of the Smoke. My boy E, I'm Jones. Jones of the Sports. We make sports better. Peace. Welcome to Jones and for Sports, where we make sports better.